Hey guys, welcome to episode number 566. Today is Monday, so it's update Monday. And today I wanted to reproduce this lovely aquarium decoration that I recently purchased. It is a slate wood or a piece of driftwood with slate attached to it. I'm sure you guys have seen these in the stores before, probably overpaid for something like this. What I wanna do is take a look at this one because this is an excellent example of how to do this. I wanna deconstruct it and I, I want to then replicate it with a whole bunch of different pieces of driftwood that I have behind me. But before we get started, make sure you hit the subscribe button. If you'd like to help support this channel, please go check out myaquariumbox.com. Anyways, we've got some drilling to do. We've got some cutting to do. It's gonna be a fun, quick DIY project, but I think it's gonna turn out great, and we've got a lot of different types of wood to test out. So come along with me and learn how to be a better aquarist. All right, so before we get started, I thought we would take a look at this piece of spider wood on a piece of slate, which I recently picked up. Um, in an order. This piece is very unique. I love spider wood because every piece is just so incredibly unique and when it's positioned on a piece of slate like this it actually has like a wind swept tree sort of look. So if you can imagine some moss growing on the top of a piece like this it would make a very nice accent in an aquascape tank or a beta tank or something like that. This is one of the better uh, examples of a slate attached to a piece of driftwood that I've seen recently. And so I wanted to take a closer look at what actually makes it um, a good example. So first off, uh, we've got a proportional piece of slate to the driftwood spider wood. Uh, it's not super floaty. So it doesn't need a giant piece of slate attached to it. So I, I feel like the slate is a good size. Uh, it's also relatively flat on the bottom, which is important. And, um, you know, it does have sort of a, an oblong shape. It's not like an exact square cut. Uh, so it does look a little bit more natural than it otherwise would if it was just a, a, a straight on square. And the screws that are underneath uh, the first part that's important is that there's two of them. Oftentimes what you'll see is there'll just be one screw and that would allow the piece of wood to swivel around on its base and come loose, uh, which could cause a disaster, could cause a crack in the tank if you're taking this in and out of the tank. So with two uh, screws in the bottom, this is firmly secured to the base. It's not going to come loose. and. Uh, the other important part to note about these screws is that they are stainless steel. If you ever look on the bottom of one of these and you see like one of those wood deck screws, um, it's something you're probably going to want to replace and you're going to want to replace it with stainless screws. Stainless screws are going to last a lot longer, they're not going to corrode in your tank, uh, they're not going to leach any metals into your water. So two screws, stainless screws, nice size base. And the piece of wood itself is also fairly decent in character. All right, so this is what we're going to try to replicate here. Let's take a quick look at all of the different types of wood that I have to work with here, because I want to try an example of every single one of these, see which ones work best, which ones work worst, and uh, hopefully at the end of this, we have a, a bunch of different specimens that we can look at. So. What do we have? We'll start off over here. We got a piece of Malaysian driftwood. This is sort of a boxy type shape wood. This does sink on its own, so it doesn't necessarily need a slate base to it. But what I want to do is I want to sort of lean it in a way which it wouldn't be able to necessarily hold itself up on its own if it didn't have a base. So it's just something that I want to try. Also, I know that out of all of these woods, Malaysian is probably one of the toughest woods. So I want to test how hard it is to cut this and drill it. So we've got Malaysian wood. Next up over here, this is a piece of Saba wood. Uh, I believe this comes from either South America or Africa. Luckily, this already has a flat cut to it. So this one should be pretty easy to do. 
It's got some nice spiky tops to it. So very cool one there. And then we have Mopani wood. Mopani wood is an amazing wood with sort of the two tone colors to the wood itself. And again, this is one that sinks on its own, so it doesn't necessarily need a slate base. But again, I want to cut it in a way where it wouldn't be able to hold itself up on its own, um, you know, if it didn't have that slate base. So cool little piece of wood there. Of course, we need to use a piece of spider wood as well so we can compare it to the uh, other one that we have. We've got a piece of Pacific wood here. Very nice little piece. Some of these we may not be able to get two screws in, by the way, just the, the size and the shape of some of these pieces, and, and this actually might be one of those. Unless I can get down into this uh, knot area here, I might be able to get two screws in, but we'll see as we construct these uh, exactly what they're gonna turn out to look like. We've got a very large piece of choya wood here. This is like the teddy bear or chain fruit choya. Um, sometimes this doesn't have enough thickness to the wall of the piece of wood to allow for a screw to go into it. This one I specifically chose because it is very thick here. It's one of the, the pieces that is closer to the base or the trunk of the cactus, the dead cactus plant. And so that should give me plenty of space to drill uh, at least two screws into this one as well. This stuff is cool. It's got tons of character. So I'm really excited about that. Next up over here, this is just a piece of uh, bogwood or driftwood that I pulled off the bottom of a lake a few years back. I shot a video on that a few years ago. You can go check that out. This has been in my fish room in and out of different tanks for a while. I thought I would chop this probably in two pieces and uh, see if I can get at least one nice specimen out of that. And then we've got this gigantic wood over here. This is a mountain driftwood. Uh, if you go check out Mike Mass Aquariums, his YouTube channel, he's got a black water tank. I think it's 135 gallons, and he's got a lot of this stuff in there. It's very cool wood. It's got a ton of character. Um, what I'm going to do is chop it down into a more manageable size. This stuff is up to four feet long. And so there's not many tanks that are tall enough to utilize something like this, but I think it's a great wood to test out uh, with these slate bases. So anyways, those are the different woods I have. This is what I'm gonna try to replicate. Let's get to work. All right, guys, and here's a quick work in progress update here. As you can see, we have all of our pieces of slate cut out appropriately sized for the pieces of driftwood that will be going on top of them. Now, some of them obviously stand up on their own, unaided. Those are gonna be really easy, really straightforward to uh, attach. 
Others are going to be a little bit more difficult, like this one will not stand up on its own. Um, it's just too weighted to one side, so it falls over. So uh, these ones are going to be a little bit tougher to uh, get attached, but once they're all attached, they'll all be secure and they'll all be ready to go. Now, you can see most of these pieces of slate. Uh, all I did was cut them to size and then I rounded the corners over. I think that's uh, enough, but if you want to go the extra mile, uh, this is an example of one that I just did sort of like a random shape for this piece of slate. And I think it turned out pretty good, kind of unique. You know, everyone's a little bit different. So, um, you know, it, it gives it a little bit more character when it's sort of cut to size and it's got nice big round curves um, on the piece of slate itself. But regardless, all of these are basically ready to go. The next thing we need to do is drill holes in the slate and then attach or screw the slate to the wood. Now, the screws I'm going to be using here are grip right exterior screws. These are stainless steel. That's the important part. Uh, these are 305 stainless. There's different grades of stainless. I believe 316 would be the best. Um, it would basically be completely immune to corrosion of any type. You could probably throw it in a saltwater tank and it wouldn't have any issues. But these are 305, which are good enough for our purposes. Uh, I got the 1 and 5 8 inch screw here. This is the size of it. Uh, there are different sizes. I think they go up to 3 inches or whatnot. They're basically meant to be used in outdoor environments, wet environments, like on docks and things like that. So this is certainly the, uh, the way to go. You do not want to use just a conventional um, screw because those will rust. So um, one and five eighths inch, that should allow me to get through the slate and then have a, probably a full inch of embedment within the piece of wood itself, which should give plenty of grip um, to keep a piece of wood attached to the slate. Now, I'm going to try to get at least two screws through each piece of wood. In some cases, I may only be able to get one, just depending on how thick the wood is. Um, so we'll have to sort of see as we go. But this is a look at everything uh, before we get started on drilling these things. Now, the bits that I'm going to use, there's two different types of bits. These are masonry concrete bits, and uh, you can tell because it's got sort of that wedge shape on the top. These are meant for drilling holes through like cement blocks and whatnot, uh, maybe like in your basement walls or something. This is the thing that I'm gonna use to drill a hole through the slate. And then I've just got regular wood bits and these are going to be used to drill or pre-drill a hole into the piece of wood um, in the direction that I want the screw to go because we don't want the screw to sort of go off center and start poking out the side of the wood we want it to drill straight and true into the center of the wood uh, to make sure that everything is going to go together smoothly so those are the two bits I have I also have this sacrificial bit yeah, this is just an old bit, and uh, what I'm thinking I'm going to do, and I'll see how this works out, is use this to sort of enlarge the hole through the slate um, to allow the head of this screw to sit below the bottom of the slate. We don't want the head sticking out um, of the back side of the slate because that would put a pressure point uh, on your glass aquarium if this was to sit all the way against the glass. So we want to sort of countersink that. So that's what this bit is going to be for. We'll make a little countersink in the slate. Hopefully all this goes together, but let's get building.
All right, guys, and here is the finished product. Now, this was our sample right here. And then these are all of the ones that we just put together. Tons of different driftwood here. We've got the Mopani, such a cool piece. Tons of character. The black side underneath, the white side on the top. It's sort of uh, spindly in shape. Very cool, very cool piece there. So we got the Mopani. We've got our one-to-one -one comparison here with our piece of spider wood. Uh, maybe not quite as cool because it doesn't have as many branches, but as you can see, pretty similar. Uh, obviously that one's a little bit smaller and a little bit more rough on the slate and this one since it's slate tile It's a little bit more perfect um, With the the square rounded edges uh, This is the only thing I'm not happy about the uh, spider wood was the only one out of all of these that was too small So I only put one screw in it. It seems like it's um, holding up okay, but over time that might loosen, so I might need to tighten that over time. So we got our spider wood. We'll get this one out of the way. Then we've got our large choya wood. This thing is beastly, and uh, I'm pretty happy with this. This may be one of the softer woods out of all of these, so over time um, the screws might actually loosen and come off of a base like this. Only time will tell, but um, regardless, at that point, this will be completely waterlogged and will sink on its own. So, very happy with that. We got two screws in that one. We got our piece of Malaysian wood. Again, it sinks on its own, but if you want it to uh, be positioned a certain way, certain angle, so that it stands up uh, the way you want it, you can always put a base on it like this. Happy with that. This one is the piece of bog wood um, that I collected. This is the only one that has the uh, the irregular uh, shape slate on the bottom. And as you can see, we had a happy accident as we were drilling these holes. Uh, when it actually got all the way through, it blew out on the bottom side, which actually allowed us to countersink those stainless steel screws uh, without having to do a whole lot of extra work. So, very cool there. We've got a piece of bog wood. Over here, we've got our piece of Pacific wood. Small piece, but uh, it's got a lot of character. It's got a kind of funny shape. Over here, we've got our Saba wood, and this is actually the only one out of all of these that gave us a little bit of trouble. And here's what happened. We actually cracked the uh, base of this one, and I don't know if you can see it, but it's like right there. There's a little like hairline crack in the slate. I over tightened one of the screws, and I heard the slate crack. I backed off the screw a little bit. It seems like it's holding together for now, uh, but that might be one where we might need to swap that slate out um, before we you know, start tossing this around in tanks because we don't want the slate to crack in half as we're taking it in or out of a tank because the shard could go off and do some damage to the glass walls of a tank. So um, when you are screwing your screws in, it just needs to be hand tight. Any tighter, and you're gonna develop some cracks. Like there's the crack line right there. So that's no good. And then finally, we've got our mountain wood. This is a gigantic piece here, the largest of the bunch by far. Um, this may be a little overkill in terms of the, the size of this piece of slate, but I wanted to test out different shapes, different sizes uh, for different pieces of wood. So uh, larger pieces of wood, larger slate. And I think we've got a pretty good variety at the end of the day. So, now that you've seen me build all of these and we've sort of walked through them, well, let's throw them in an aquarium.
right guys I thought these goldfish could use some decorations so now their tank is certainly full of them Ow, out of all of these the only one that gave us trouble was this gigantic piece of choyo wood uh, it looks like it's a little bit too buoyant for the size of the slate that I put on it and the two ways I could fix that is maybe picking up a thicker piece of slate uh, or enlarging the piece of slate that's attached to it but I'm pretty sure after an hour or two of bobbing on the surface like this it'll probably slowly sink by itself so it'll probably fix itself anyways guys this is a quick look at all of the driftwood in the aquarium uh, if you guys would like to win one of these pieces of driftwood all you have to do in the comment section down below is leave a comment with the name of the piece of wood that you want to win. It can be any comment whatsoever as long as you include the type of wood that you'd like to win. Now if someone sent you to this video uh, as a contest also in the comment include their YouTube name so the name of the wood that you want to win and their YouTube name, whoever sent you here, and both of you will win a piece of wood. As long as it's not the same one, otherwise you have to fight it out for it. But again, um, you know, you have to live in the continental United States. I'll pick a winner within two weeks of this video posting and uh, we'll give away either one or two pieces of wood, depending. So uh, again, we've got the Pacific wood here. We've got the mountain wood out back we've got the spider wood in the front we've got the bog wood in the back we've got the uh, mopani wood up front we got the large piece of choya wood here we got the malaysian driftwood and the one that i don't want to ship is the saba wood because it has that cracked base so that is the project hope you guys enjoyed it I think it turned out pretty good. All right, guys, and that's going to do it for this week's video. We had a ton of fun recreating those wood slates. I think it's a cool idea. I know they cost a lot when you buy them in store, but hopefully after watching this video, you can understand why there is an additional charge for adding slate base. It's a lot of work. It's kind of messy. But in the end, I think it produces a pretty cool result. You don't want to wait for your wood to sink on its own. Get one with a slate base. Hopefully, with this video, you know how you can go make one yourself. The slate that I used is something you can pick up at your local hardware store. Same thing with the screws. So all you need to do is find yourself a nice piece of driftwood, cut a nice flat bottom on it, and away you go. Anyways guys, in next week's video, hopefully we manage to get up to New Hampshire in the woods. Maybe we can do some ice fishing. I don't know. Hopefully we can get outside. Hopefully it's somewhere with water or frozen water. We'll have to see. But that is for next week. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed. If you want to help support this channel, you can always go check out myaquariumbox.com and make sure you give this video a like and subscribe if you want more content like this in the future. Hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys later.